Hi. Hello. So let's see, you talked to Ivy and Scott. Mm-hmm. Love- yes. And who else did you talk to? You talked to? Uh, Gail Benedict, um, Michelin Sisti, uh, Carrie, Carrie Robbins. Carrie Robbins. Gibby Brand and McIntyre Dixon. Yes. Wow, mm-hmm. both dads. Two out of three. <laughs> I need another third one. So Mac was my first dad. Mm-hmm. And I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know that I knew he was still alive. So that's really special. That's not that terrible to say. And then Gibby. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I wasn't actually the first Marcella. Do you know that? No. So no. there was uh, there was a year before me. Um, so I must have come on in, in 84. There mm-hmm. was a year before me where Marinda Stott, S-T-A-A-T, um, I, it was a whole different show, though. It was a completely yeah. different show. That yes. Yes. Scott told us a lot about that last time we talked. We and, know. and there are a lot of the same people there. Well, I don't think it was William Gibson. I think no. William Gibson wrote this one, but he didn't write the very oh. first one. <laughs> um, but Patty Birch was involved and Joe Raposo was involved in the first one. But um, yeah, so Miranda Stott played the very first Marcella. And mm-hmm. um, but then they but it was just a little part then. Right. So I rem- I was act- I think I was 12 when I started because I remember turning 13 during rehearsals and I'm 50 now mm-hmm. uh, just to put it all in perspective right <laughs> um, but I remember auditioning and I was just one of the local Albany kids so it was this big equity show and I can t- tell you that I was a Grease 2 fan and that's like they were all coming off of Grease 2 right so Louis St. Louis have you heard that name yet yeah yes, yes. Mm-hmm. love Louis St. Louis and so Louis St. Louis and Patty Birch and Helena, have you heard that name yet? She was like the assistant. Yes. She was the choreographer, right? She or mm. assistant choreographer with Patty. I think she so. And Ivy all worked on Grease 2 together. And uh, I, so I was just one of the local girls auditioning. And I thought I was auditioning for a backup dancer, right? At 14 or 13 or whatever. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and, um, and one of my girlfriends and I were just being really catty about one of the other local girls there because right because we were just the local girls being catty mm-hmm. and um because she couldn't really dance well and we were just trying mm-hmm. to be dancers and I really <laughs> didn't know how to sing or dance I didn't know how to uh, yeah I didn't really know how to sing or anything I really don't know how to sing but I like to sing <laughs> but um and I ended up getting I ended up getting audition for it and they just kept bringing they just kept just kept me and I ended up getting the Marcella role even though I had no idea that I was auditioning for her <laughs> so like what a break right like we right. all and um yeah so I turned so that was that was just extraordinary so you know being from like upstate New York and always wanting to be an actor that was and so all these I mean seriously this is the story I mean I live in Washington DC and I'm lobbyist now so like totally didn't <laughs> stick, but but did it for a long time and um but that's because all these like lo- um managers and agents were like who's this local chick who got the like this local girl so I got to like pick a manager and pick an agent and I'm believe it or not I'm still Facebook friends with my manager from when I was 12 years old oh, it's wow, not crazy. That's so sweet. <laughs> and I did my first national commercial before the show even like started and it was like mix any cream of wheat and I did right like back in like 1984 or something and then I did my second or before we left for Moscow so maybe 1985 Mm -hmm. And then I did my second national commercial when we got back, which was like Wrinkles Doll, which was like the Coleco pound puppy, right? (laughs) And so it was a great, it definitely started my career. And on top of it, I love the cast. And so I got to be in it as the show like found its legs. Like why we, right. We changed it every day. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was more a dancer than a singer. So the part that was supposed to be like my solo part was the clouds when they go up in the clouds. I ended up getting to dance it more than I sang it because and I think they let Ivy sing part of my yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think in the beginning I sang it. And then I think Joe Raposo was probably like, please don't make me hear this. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got to dance it and then, and she, uh, and she sang, but no, it's, it's a beautiful, I think it's, you know, I think it was, um, I could probably still do a whole ton of it. And actually my, and I'm, I should, probably I can I still sing this the sun and the moon like song that um that uh Beth did right like the shooting star song don't call yeah. me the meteor <laughs> what yeah. a bore, right so if you have done all the digging have you seen the CBS documentary about the trip yes yes, yes. yes. we um actually found like the entirety of the Isipa show like the one of the very first 
complete recordings. So did yeah. I have a wig or did I have long hair or did I you have had a wig? You had your short hair. Short hair. And actually that was a wig. Yeah. yeah I wig. knew it was a wig. It was a wig. <laughs> Everyone and doubted I'm, me. And they used a picture of me in the wig for the first Broadway marquee. Oh, right? interesting. So if you find so I didn't get to go to Broadway, right? Because I was um, I guess I was too old or maybe not good enough. I don't know. But <laughs> either way, um I didn't get to do the Broadway cast and my it was okay because my mother used to just drive by the marquee and be like oh it's like that was too much for her anyway was to see my face on the marquee <laughs> um I mean it was like an etching of a that to know how different my yeah, oh my god I do that's oh my god that's it that's it so <laughs> look at I used to be so cute <laughs> so so you so so you were the, the model for that for that version of the playbill for that, that version, version. Of the that's so I cool. have you have the other oh my one. gosh then you have the one where they're like on the boat, right? Yeah, yeah one sec. I don't care. That's her. Oh, that's the other goodness. girl. That's a, that's a third Marcella. And if it means anything, I was the longest Marcella. So do you know the whole story? Like you have to think about now, like now the whole Russia thing, now put this back in 1985. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, right, pre-glass nodes, pre-raising of the Iron Curtain, right? Please pre-take down the wall. Like, you know, it, it was different. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Gibby Brand was probably one of the crankier of the actors for, if I remember at the time, he was wonderful <laughs> to me. I mean, in the sense that when we got over there, he, um, you know, we, you know, we had our interpreters who were really all KGB to make sure nothing went wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And my, because originally we were supposed to go before Christmas and I'm the youngest of three girls, my mom did not come with me. So oh. they sent me with like, she was supposed to be a tutor, but really she worked for Asipa and she just was shopping with me. She's who stayed with me as like a, like the guardian. And I remember one day we're like, oh, we have to wake up really early. And like, but we never said with that, like literally like maybe four o'clock in the morning, like we had like, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work. We go came barreling into our room, like, and then like the national anthem or something. And we're like, we're like jumping up trying to figure out what's going on. And it was really just that the, and then we're like stop stop turn it on and it, like everything was bugged it was just like a totally different time but I remember mm -hmm. Gibby being like um like I remember there being an interview about the fact that we didn't really get to interact mm -hmm. as much yep so this is so sweet so he so Gibby and Beth had lived on in Chelsea so this is crazy why I remember this shit I don't know why uh, but they <laughs> they had lived like on 23rd street in Chelsea and um yeah when I was just starting off and like I was too young like yeah I was like 15, 16 years old or something. And I would come some and stay with them sometimes when they would, um, yeah, it was really, they were just, yeah, just such a great time. Patty Birch, so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to find that documentary. You, where, do you guys have it stored someplace or do you? Yeah, it's, um, it's the documentaries on YouTube. Yes. Ivy, Ivy actually posted the documentary. Yeah, Ivy also yes. posted the documentary. So. <laughs> okay, so I adore her, but so I was too young to know like how to, how to make it, how to work. She worked that documentary like nobody's business right like she <laughs> and that was her part I mean when that didn't survive like it broke my heart for her when that didn't right but think about it like William Gibson I mean such a like how lucky for me in my lifetime that I worked with him like that's mm -hmm. tremendous right yeah <laughs> <laughs> did any of your friends or family see the show while you were in it and what did they think of it <laughs> oh my god they also because I was the local kid right yes. and I did it for you and I did it for you I feel like at least two seasons in Albany and then the one in Moscow. Yeah, so I was like there from yeah, 12 to 15, I would say I was involved somehow because I turned 13 right after we started and I went, we went to Chicha's for lunch <laughs> and uh, to turn 13. And then I was probably almost 15 when we started, right around 15 when the show moved to Broadway. And it really, it did kick off my career. I did, you know, commercials and I was on All My Children for a while and like, you know, like it definitely shifted my life from local actress to national actress. And so, um, you know, I owe that whole opportunity, that part of my, my life. I had no, re you know, I, I had no reason to get that opportunity. I just, you know, and it was all, like, when I think back, you know, I remember some of the, you know, I remember some of the clippings, right? And um, yeah, like, I think it was so special. Um, and like I had a, a child really late in life, so he's only six right now. And I, I probably need to find some of those things just so 
he can know, know that I was something other than this like crazy mommy sees now. Honestly, like this is just so, I hope you know how special this is that you guys even reached out. Like this just doesn't exist in my life. Like I don't even talk about this part of my life ever. <laughs> so I still see, I always use like, like, um, you know, what's a mere figment? You're a mere figment. Um, <laughs> like we do, we always, we do, we still say we're all dolls go to die. Like, right. I mean, we, <laughs> I, my family, so my husband, of course, thinks I'm cra- my family and I are crazy when we pull out these lines because it's from so long ago. But um, my whole, when you ask me who from my family saw it, I come, a, come from a big, fat, hairy Italian family in upstate New York. <laughs> and they all came multiple times. And um, if you ever watch the footage from when we left for Moscow, there's like a thousand little cousins all there hugging me goodbye. And um, we, I remember somebody gave me like a white synthetic fur coat like <laughs> so I don't know why and a pink beret or something I don't know so I have this image of me in this white fur coat and pink beret and I don't know why I, that came flashing to me and we went to see the tomb of the unknown soldier at, in Moscow right and um and I kept um bundling myself up right because it's flipping cold and we went and flip in January and they kept Oh, they, they kept opening my hands and opening my, they kept thinking I was going to like somehow puncture this like wax figure, right? I don't know what they, because it does not look real, by the way, when you go see, I don't know if any of you have been to Moscow, but I, they replaced that body a long time ago. I don't, I don't think it's him. I really, well, I mean, but what, look at what a tremendous feeling it's experience. Like I got to go, I got to go and represent the youth of America back in like 1980, flipping five. Right. you guys weren't even born in 1985 that's, no, that no. just hit me not a single one of you were born yet I keep asking you to like think and I keep saying like go back and think about what life was like for like a gay so, person and so, Russia and yeah. you guys don't I would love to know if Ivy and um, Scott how much of Moscow they relived for you because they probably didn't they probably lived, relived Broadway right for you but like for Moscow mm-hmm. it was like we came in and they're like um, French, French, yeah. French, forever. Yes. Okay. Peace and friendship and war <laughs> is never. Like, talk about overwhelming. I mean, they did this beautiful production. I mean, you had the Bolshoi Ballet and the Bolshoi Opera and the Bolshoi Theater, right? I mean, it's, I mean, it's mind blowing. And like, I'm 14 or 15 years old. It was mind blowing, <laughs> mind blowing. And you have to, I have to tell you, and I work here in Washington, D.C., and nobody knows I know that I got this. Like, that's so funny. <laughs> have you talked to, uh, Pamela, the one who played the cat, the bat. Um, no. Pamela, no. no, not Pamela. Not we talked Pamela. to Gail. She uh, is so flippin' fantastic. If you find her, not funny. Well, I was surprised that some of the, so some of the Albany Asipa, like, in-house people did go, right? So the panda went? No. No. Right? No. 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 That was recast as well. No. Oh. So the panda from Asipa, because she was so neat, um, curly dark hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah she was sitting but I love Joel like Joel oh my mm-hmm. goodness you could even see him being the wrinkly knees you know what I feel like that's in the documentary him practicing in Moscow did right is that in the documentary yeah mm-hmm. and you yeah. see Joe Raposo being like play out right like is yeah. that is not in there yes. and it was like them trying to teach them how to do more swing but they're also um specialized right like the the right that the guys playing in the orchestra in um like the actual Russian players were like so well-trained that they didn't know how to loosen up and do sort of the swing part, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this is so funny, the stuff that comes back, right? <laughs> but I was, but I will tell you, there was a funny story about like really when you get to Moscow at that time, you have to, uh, at the time it was just, you weren't supposed to drink the water, right? So you could drink regular Pepsi, warm Pepsi, or um, you weren't supposed to drink the water and then, or coffee, right? And like, like I said, I was like 14 or 15. And then they said, um, then what they said was, um, so I finally gave in and I decided I was just going to drink the water because I had to, because I was just so sick of all the sweet stuff. And I gulped what I thought was the water and it was just straight vodka in a cup sitting next to me. Oh no. And like, (laughs) and so then I, so then I just like, started like, then I just, and then one of the like interns was like, oh yeah, just put like lemonade mix and it'll make it better. And like, so then I kept drinking a little bit more. And the next day for the show, um, Gibby was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? And he goes, you kept looking up over my head through the, I kept thinking something was going to fall on me because you never really looked me in the eye. The last time I was allowed to drink before a show. 
the other thing about Moscow is that you would do the show. And so my character was really on the stage the whole time, except one time I go down a trap in the bed and come back like on the other side of the stage. And, um, and then you would, and then you would do these two hour curtain calls. Did anybody talk about that? The, and, and you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't help but love and appreciate it, but I mean, all of us got all of, I mean, I think all of us were losing weight just because you were so tired and you were right. You were exhausted, but I, and, but like, I was, I was, I was a kid. Right. But I mean, you could just see Ivy just get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier as the time went on um, because she was the star, right. Everybody wanted her, but um, yeah. So I would be on the stage the whole time and then you would come out and do the curtain call and then there'd be, you know, you know, we would all be on stage and then we would dance and then people would come on stage and, dance and then <laughs> it just kept going and going and I, yeah I mean I, I feel like I remember it being it was probably wasn't a two-hour curtain call but it <laughs> felt like a two-hour curtain call this many years later let's see because this story so I so my type so I will tell you and I'm trying to remember what song it is but my mom in my baby shower in, invite put like a snippet of one of the songs from Raggedy Ann oh. in the invite so when you opened it and I'm trying um <laughs> I have to find I, I'll have to find it the shooting star is a favorite obviously raggedy right she says the and my heart says I want to go home and you're like mm -hmm. um that's always special I think I feel like anytime the dad sings your heart breaks yeah I mean mm -hmm. he only gets one real song I think I would go back and cringe if I watched it right now I think everyone who we've sent the the yeah. footage to have been like oh no like I, I mean now right now I could probably imagine that I like as an adult I could be like change your face change your face so William Gibson the loveliest 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 human being ever and his wife <laughs> so lovely and then and but like what a dynamic right like the most pacifist socialist right icon mm -hmm. ever and then you have like Joe Raposo who's like you know rubbing his belly and like jovial like I don't know it just was such a funny dynamic of this tall thin elderly pacifist right I think Patty's still alive right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew that Joe passed away I'm sure Bill I'm sure um, yeah Gibson. Mm -hmm. um I, I remember hearing when Joe did um and then I mean we did all our backers projects in the car in Carnegie Hall like in the right he had a that was so that was cool that was pretty cool. Like, I got to do all of that. Like, I got to get it to Broadway. That's pretty cool. But tell us more about that. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, no, it's just like they, we did backers projects up in like one of the offices in Carnegie Hall. They have oh. like, up, yeah, it was really neat. Okay. Like I said, I was like, I was just a nobody. Like, it was just like, I was, <laughs> we went to a party. So Louis St. Louis had um, a house in the Catskills. <laughs> and we all went up for a party one day and he had like this house that you could drive in at like at different floors so it, it was just really neat because I remember like you know this you know fabulous woman being there and being like oh Louis someday I'm gonna make you a rich man and I was thinking really because he looks like a rich man to me <laughs> <laughs> it was just yeah. a really wonderful time and they're wonderful people like they're one like you can tell I'm sure you can tell by watching the I think the documentary is a great example um mm -hmm. Yeah, like you know what I you know what I remember is um, from the documentary that's going to make me excited to see it is right before it goes into the slow motion, which is my favorite part of the documentary. Mm, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, is um, right before it goes into the slow motion. Um, Ivy's in the middle, and I come running out, and she puts her arm around me, like because that's what it that's you know it was like we we survived it you know, <laughs> and it was more than surviving right it was. Yeah. Yeah, like it was, it was great. It was great. And like, talk about like learning by the best. I, I think Patricia Birch was, she's the original anybody's from West Side Story, right? Like, I mean, talk about a kick-ass lady. That woman can, she, mm -hmm. does, she, she was, she's the shit. And she's, <laughs> she, I, she's someone I would love to cross paths with again. Um, well, I would say that uh, that Ivy probably. I would think that Ivy would talk to her. Does she? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I believe so. I know, I know she, she talks to Patricia Snyder. I mean, she should be really like. I mean, honestly, like making that cultural exchange happen, like that's <laughs> that's crazy. Absolutely. And when they came here, you know, they came to Albany. You know, that was really. I mean, that was that was huge. Like that's a part. Like once again, when I was like saying like <laughs> now, 
I mean, we're talking about sort of the Russian Ukraine thing now, and you're like, like it was Gorbachev, like it was a totally different, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, Putin was still around, but like <laughs> now is, I mean, you know, it was still the USSR then, right? It wasn't, mm-hmm. it, you know, you, you didn't call it Russia then, right. like you weren't supposed to at least. Yeah, it was, it was truly, 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 truly remarkable that we got to do that. And then, you know, but then to, for the point about being, getting to be part of a show, like um, a friend of mine was part of Hamilton from the beginning and he, so to be something that works, so to workshop something and like to be at it, like to, so I think those are, to be at something that starts in its nascent. And, and while I wasn't in the 83 show, it was a different show. Yeah. So there was a woman, Betsy Normile, have you heard that name? from the Asipa show? Yes. yes. Yeah. She was like one of the vocal coaches. Hmm. She was a super kick-ass lady. I don't know where that name just came from out of nowhere. <laughs> um, yeah, she was she, she was from the Asipa group. I'm trying to think of who, I don't <clears throat> think Pam was in the first show, in the first year, but she was, she, she, I mean, she would just take it all, like I couldn't believe how far she would let them flex that pole. I, I could not believe it was so scary to watch. Well, I will tell you, well, there was one of the shows that um, when we're on a roof and they, and and I think it was, um, right, the wolf throws something into the fireplace and it did catch on fire. And we're all like doing, our, we're all doing our show. And everyone's kind of looking and like, everyone's still acting, but it's catching more and more on fire. <laughs> And then finally, um, and the guy who played Wolf was one of the local Asipa guys. He was so neat. He, and he throws the whole chimney off the stage and you hear this. <laughs> it was so crazy. It was, oh, no. yeah. And, with the, and one time, like, you know, the scene with the trees are all moving and like, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you, was that both seasons or just the second season that the trees that moved? Both. And that was both. both. Yes. both. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. Like, in, you know, now now I'm just just showing my age. You but remember yeah, one of the tree, they, like, so much more than stage. most of the people we talk to. What is it? Oh, <laughs> you just remember so much more than a lot of the other oh. people we talk to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's also, you know, like, what a big deal. Like, it was such yeah. a big deal for me, you know. What a special time you guys have offered me uh, tonight to be able to to touch this. And I, you know, I think um, my mom probably remembers it so much more wholly than I do because, mm-hmm. right, because she's the mom. And, <laughs> and I never thought it would end and, right. Let me see what else. Fun. Like, I, I mean, it was great. I can. So I actually think that I liked the 85 version more than the 84 version. Yeah, it just as got- do we. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. it is better in most ways. Um, yeah. Not always. But the, the main thing is at the end of this of Marcella and her mother's scene that ever since 1985, Marcella completely forgives her mother for everything. And they end the show with like a, a hug and forgiveness <laughs> for everything. Yeah. Instead of- like instead of realizing she abandons her and she's a bitch yeah right that's it it, it goes in some of our opinions wolf he comes riding is a better choice than general d he comes riding i would agree really good no those are good points like i would say um first of all i mean mcintyre dixon also tremendous right yeah Mm -hmm. i could cry just thinking about working with him that was he was really do you guys all agree that's so nice ultimately what it is is her dad is is saves her dad is everything right her dad saves her like what it like when you think oh my because I yeah I have a kid or now like can Mm -hmm. you think about how hard that life had to be for that dad to like give her this whole creativity I mean if you think about the the bad press that that the show got about you know being so scary or something but you think like Wizard of Oz had that same and I mean I'm sorry like I watched I watched um Circle of Life um Lion King with my son the movie part of it where you know he was that's a pretty scary death scene, right? When your dad gets, your get dad dies in front of you. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like so you yeah, have to think like all kid mo- shows are sort of caught in like this heartbreak moment. But, you know, I mean, look, it was, and I think that, I think going back on it was part of the issue that it was such a layered story because William Gibson was such an incredible talent. I mean, like, yeah. Right. When you think about Miracle Worker and Two for the Seesaw and just like, mm-hmm. just, I mean, the story itself, you could, I, I really should go back and read it because I mean, what it was so, la- so layered. And even as a, like, even now think, I mean, there, I use, I use some of the lines from that show with him all the time, mm-hmm. but certainly the, you know, 
the heart is something that you can't see, you know, um, and, and you, <laughs> oh, right. I mean, like, um, and that you ate it. Oh, carry on, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> and then you had like, and then you have like this Sesame Street composer, right? Right. And so was it a little bit, and it wasn't that, was it a little bit incongruent? And, and you guys tell me, cause you watch it now, like, cause you've seen it so many decades over when you're and in it, you don't think so, but. We also have seven scripts from Gibson's archives that go yeah. from his first drafts or like earlier which in 1984, which are very interesting. Yeah, darker, darker, oh, right? Very much. Very. Um, all the way to um, drafts worked on during Broadway. So we yeah. have a very good timeline of how the show progressed and how it changed. Yeah. Um, and so, and what do you think? Because you guys, <laughs> what do you, like, what do you think? I think the first one, uh, they cleaned it up for the 85 run. And then when it got to Broadway, it kind of got worse. <laughs> I'm just trying to think about the, the way that the story unfolds. But yeah, when Raggedy Ann finally gives up and wants to when she realizes that she's she's afraid she's taken them too far, right? But the whole journey, um, when you're low down, saggy and blue. But yeah, Mexico, <laughs> and they're like, I mean, there's some, I mean, there's some fun, there's some fun times, but there's, I mean, but there's some heartbreak. It's there's some heartbreaking mm -hmm. moments as well. And, and but I think it had something to do with when Greece too ended. Like there was some, and you also have to know that when they came off of it for the '83 version. Yeah. Apparently that was a miserable experience because I, I heard about that, <laughs> you know, like talk about, like, I think that that was like the Grease 2 being a total utter failure. I have to tell you, I could watch Grease 2 any day of the week. It's kind of like Pitch Perfect, the original Pitch Perfect. That's like a happy place for me. That final, <laughs> that final scene in Pitch Perfect, my happy place. Yeah. So I remember the, I remember the part where she, she's upset with her mom in the, yeah, yeah. that's the week version. When she comes, because she finds her coming into the, um, right into the forest is where she, mm -hmm. right? Oh, Jesus. You're right. But you know what's oh, really God. interesting? Like, did you, so now, you know, with Sondheim dead, like, you know, he talks about like his early, like his work, like West Side Story, like embarrassed him, right? Like he hates I Feel Pretty. He hates that he have wrote, I feel, like he goes, you know, a poor young Puerto Rican woman is not going to, you know, I feel charming. It's alarming how charming, like, I feel like, she goes, that's not what she's going to say. Like, there's nothing authentic about that song. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, you know, so I think that there has to be these moments that even like the most brilliant of, of creators has to be like, yeah, what did I, yeah. I, I gave, I gave, I gave in. <laughs> <laughs> we want to work with Gibson. With, with his original writing and his um vision we want to work with it rather than just replacing it it's we have made lots of changes but uh it's still recognizable as the same show because a lot of it is gibson's writing just rearranged and reworked yeah well it's amazing that you have his journals that you can you can crosswalk with intent i really i love that you love the show and that you taking the time to find out more about it. I would love it to, I would love it to be re, like, I don't know where, like, do you have to get, I mean, I guess Gibson must have signed over the script on some way, no? His <laughs> estate owns the copyright for his script. Um, and we have gotten in contact with them. The funny thing is they didn't even know <laughs> that, oh, no. that it existed. Oh yes. no. Oh, we've also, yeah. we contacted the Raposos as well. We also, we've also contacted the Raposos and they're very nice. Um, and they're, I think they're on board with us. The entire yeah. verse of So Beautiful was given to Marcella. It was given yes. back to Marcella. I think, let's see, So Beautiful, what is it? So wonderful, soaring high in the night, right? So yeah. marvelous, miraculous. How can stars be so bright? Could this be the heaven they said was in store? Will it go on forevermore? So beautiful, so wonderful tonight. Oh, that was wonderful. That was so lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. I think I'm going to have a little cry tonight in a good way, but I want to say that. It deserves to be shared. It's just, it's so special. And I think more people should know about it. Like, I think anybody who was part of it and felt like 
mm-hmm. something positive could be renewed. It was like, there was so much of our lives where, you know, and I was just a fraction, right? Well, thank you guys for trying. Like, I would love to see you do it. That would be super great. Um, yeah, it's a special show, you know? Yeah. Really? And you can put back in that her mother's a bitch. <laughs> That's what we did. 